This video is made possible by our loyal Patreon supporters. Visit patreon.com slash psychytruth. I have tons of awesome videos already ready for you. You can join me on Amazon Prime Video. Be sure to subscribe and click the bell. Follow us on social media for tips, tutorials, giveaways, and daily inspiration. Hi, welcome. I'm so glad that you're here at day seven. I know yesterday you worked really, really hard. So in today's video, we're going to take it down a notch with a rest and recovery flow. This is important for you so that you can reduce your stress level and all those stress hormones so that your body is optimized to burn fat. So let's get started. Find an easy seat. And if you'd like, you can always put a cushion or a block underneath your sit bones so that you have a little bit of elevation, which might be more comfortable for your knees. Find a tall spine. Take your shoulders right up to your ears, then draw them back and down. Let's do that a couple more times. Roll the shoulders up, back, and down. One more time. Up, back, and down. On your breath in, reach your arms up. On your breath out, hands to heart. Again, reach up, big breath. Hands to your heart. Slow and steady breathing, reach up. And hands to heart. Good, let's incorporate some side bends. Reach up. And then drop your left hand down and reach your right arm over, gaze up. Lift through the ribs, find a little side bend. Should feel really nice to pull some space into the side body. Good, and lift up through the center. Switch to the other side. Lift your rib cage a little bit farther and notice if you can draw a deeper stretch into the side body. Good. Lift up through the center, reach up, and then turn over your right shoulder a little twist. So we're thinking about rest and recovery. It doesn't mean you're doing nothing today. You're still in the habit of your exercise regimen, your yoga practice, which is very essential for habit building. You wanna do something every single day, but it doesn't mean that you have to go super intense every day. Come through the center and twist to the other side. Continue to keep a tall spine so that when you twist, you're not crunching your vertebrae, but you're putting some space and some length into your back. Great. Good. Come to the center, reach the arms up, and we'll take a little eagle arm. So that'll be right arm underneath the left across at the elbows. Options. So you can either grab onto your shoulder heads, you can bring the backs of your hands together, or you can bind the wrists. Draw the elbows down and lift the chest up. You're going to feel a stretch right in the front of your shoulders and out to the side of the shoulders. Stay nice and tall and lift it in your spine and take two more breaths. Good, if you have a little more room, lift the elbows now. If that increases the stretch beyond what you can breathe through, then just lower the elbows back down. Great, release your arms on your inhale, sweep them up, and then we'll switch to the other side. Left elbow under the right. Again, you can grab the shoulder heads, you can back the hands together, or you can bind at the wrists. Go with what feels like a comfortable stretch for you, but there should be sensation. So if you're not feeling anything, take it to the next level. Start with the elbows down and the chest lifted. And as you're breathing in and out here, you might notice that the inhales will stretch into the back, into the side rib cage, and into the front rib cage. So you're actually stretching from the inside out, which is so great. I love that about yoga. When you incorporate the breath, the breath becomes an active part of the pose. Great, now lift the elbows. Remember, only lift them as far as you can to keep a steady, maintained breath. I 
feels really, really good in the upper back. One more inhale. And release. Good. So you're going to come forward and come off your block if you're sitting on anything. You can set that to the side. You probably won't need it. At least not for a little while. Bring your sit bones down to the ground and the soles of your feet together. And then sit up really tall and grab onto your feet. Press your heels together. And as you do that, you'll notice your knees might drop a little bit. Starting with a nice stretch for the inner thighs. After the work of the previous courses or videos in this course, you might notice that your legs are a little bit fatigued and this can be a nice stretch. Good. Sit up a little taller. Keep the legs as they are and then walk the hands forward couple inches. You don't have to go all the way down to the ground with your chest. You can just walk your fingertips forward and that will increase the stretch in your groin and your inner thighs. Good. Now walk back up. Use your hands to close the knees. Stretch out your legs and scoot your hips back once or twice till you're in staff pose, dandasana. Activate the feet. Engage your quads so you'll feel your thigh bones drop towards the ground. Circle the arms up. So you're sitting up really, really tall. Allow your spine to get as long as it can and draw the front abdomen up just a bit. That'll create some structure and some stability for the low back. Take another breath in and then a little softness in the knees as you exhale, fold. You don't have to touch your toes. You can touch your ankles. You can also rest your hands gently on the mat. Remember, the knees can be soft. You don't have to lock out the joints. Move the chest forward. And with your next exhale, bow a little deeper. If you feel pretty grounded, you're welcome to drop the head, which will continue to pull a stretch all the way into the upper back and into the neck. Even here, the low abdomen can be a little bit engaged. Core strength is essential for supporting our spine. And we're not really getting super duper loose and jello-y in this fold. We're looking for a nice stretch. Great. On your inhale, rise back up. Bring the soles of the feet together and then drag the heels towards the sit bones. Lift up really tall and again you'll fold forward. Perhaps you'll notice on this time you can go a little deeper. So just enjoying a nice stretch for the inner thighs. And the breath is still big. So a little bit of movement, even on your rest days, helps you stay involved in the habit of your practice. And habit formation is essential for any weight loss program. There's so many different things in our life that will sneak up and try to sabotage us, especially that little lie we always tell ourselves, I don't have time. But if you make yourself a priority by choosing to follow through, you'll build a habit. And once that's ingrained in you, it just becomes something that you do. Walk your hands back, close the knees, outstretch the legs, sit up really tall, inhale, and then forward fold, exhale. And again, in the second round, you might notice that you go a little deeper. This feels so good for the back of the thighs all the way into the glutes. And if you bend the knees a little bit more, you'll get a nice stretch in the low back. On this round, see if you can drop your head a little bit. Notice your own breath. And see if you can use your exhales to surrender the body a little bit deeper. Good. On your inhale, rise up. Draw the soles of the feet together. Last round of this little grounded flow. Walk your hands forward on your exhale. Move as far forward as is comfortable for your breath. Let the inner thighs stretch. We don't want our flow practice to be something that stresses us out just when we think about it, right? Stress is not something that we want to have abundance of in our life. We want to reduce our stress. And when we reduce our stress, then we're managing the output of cortisol in the body. 
Cortisol, it's not useless. We need it if we're getting chased by a tiger or we have something that's super important that we have to get done. But most of us are walking around this earth with a little bit too much cortisol in the body. And so when we engage in practices of stress reduction, the body is then encouraged to start to release the fat that it doesn't need. But if we have a ton of cortisol in the body, the body starts to think, ah, I need to protect myself. And so it'll just harbor a bunch of fat and stockpile it in case, right? It's doing it because it's trying to protect itself. Walk your hands back up, outstretch your legs, last round, sit up really tall in staff pose, and then forward fold. So gentle flows like this are just encouraging the brain and the body connection to say, you know what? It's okay. I can surrender what I don't need. I don't need to be in protection mode all the time. Notice if you can drop your head. Two more breaths. Good, on your inhale, sit up tall. This time, draw the feet in and cross the ankles and then flip onto your tabletop. Your hips will come over your knees, your shoulders will come over your wrists. So we've been in this position before in previous videos, it should feel familiar. But if you feel a little wonky today, just pay attention to what's grounded. Press down through your hands, press down through your shins, and then drag the low belly in just a little bit so you have lots of spinal support. We'll take some movement in the spine to help find a little more comfort and ease. So drop the belly on the inhale, open your chest, gaze forward. Round your back on your exhale, knit the front ribs in and push into the ground. Inhale for your cow pose. Exhale, cat pose. Breathe in, cow. Breathe out, cat. One more time. Inhale, cow pose. Exhale, cat pose. Lengthen through the middle and we'll twist. Reach your right arm all the way up and then thread the needle. Bring the shoulder and cheek down. Extend your left arm towards the top of the mat and let your ear rest softly on the ground. Twisting is a great way to encourage improved digestion. And when you combine stress relieving techniques and poses that help you improve digestion, you help the body's natural system of releasing what it doesn't need anymore. So waste product, detoxing, getting rid of anything that is no longer serving you, it needs to be flushed out. Good. Left hand underneath the shoulder. Reach the right arm up. Gaze up. And touch back down. Let's do the other side. Always good to stay balanced. Lift the left arm up. As you exhale, twist. Thread the needle. Shoulder, cheek, and ear down. Extend the right arm towards the top edge of the mat. Just taking a few breaths here. It's important when you are taking stress relieving practices to breathe deeply. Diaphragmatic breathing stimulates a vagus nerve response and that nerve is very important in slowing down the heart rate and the breath rate so that you can actually get into that rest and digest state of being. So if you notice you're breathing only in your chest, pay attention and allow the breath to move into the belly. Good. Slide your right hand under your shoulder. Unwind your left arm, reach up, touch down, and then shift back to a downward facing dog and pedal out the legs. So here in down dog, we'll continue with the work of opening up the back line of the legs. Let's continue on with the work that we did earlier of opening up the back line of our legs. So bend into your right knee and press the left heel low. Good, and then pedal to the other side, bend the left knee, press the right heel low. 
and alternate your sides a few times. In addition to lengthening out any sore muscles in your legs, you're also getting a nice stretch in the shoulders here in Downward Facing Dog. Good, now press both heels low. As you press both heels low, you might notice that your calves are stretching a lot, which is really, really important. When we have bound up muscles in our lower legs, it can refer pain and discomfort all the way up into our hips, our glutes, and our low back, and we tend to neglect stretching out our lower legs. So really emphasize dropping your heels low here. Great. Now, look to your hands and step your right foot forward and heel toe your right foot a little bit closer to your right hand so you can drop your left knee down. If you have tender knees, put a blanket or a pillow underneath your back knee. Then come up to a little Anjane Asana or Crescent Pose, but instead of reaching the arms up, just take your hands to your thigh. Drag your front heel and your back knee together. Hug them in. Lift the chest and then press the hips forward. They don't have to go very far forward, just far enough that you start to feel a stretch in the hip flexor of the back leg. Good. If you do have a yoga block and you were using it earlier, it may feel good to use it again. Bring it next to your right side. Place your right hand on it. Lift up through the belly and then reach the left arm up and take a little micro side bend. So you don't have to go far, just side bend enough that it increases the stretch up the hip flexor and even into the side of the waist. Good. This is one of my favorite stretches for my hip flexors. Beautiful. Come up through the center, land your hands, step back to down dog. Pedal that out. And we'll take the other side. Look to your hands. Step your left foot forward a little bit closer to your hand. And then drop the back knee. Start by coming up and just taking your hands to your thigh. Hug the back knee and the front heel together. Lift up through the low abdomen and the waist. And then allow the hips to drop. Hmm. These rest days are essential for reducing soreness, for one thing. We don't want to feel uncomfortable all the time, so helping our body feel a little more comfortable. Um, but they're also important to prevent injury, so that if we do have weight loss goals or fat loss goals or any type of goal, really, um, we can't do those things when we're injured, right? <laughs> so preventing injury is so important in being able to stick to whatever program uh, you've decided to do. And reducing soreness is great so you can get back to the activities that you love a little faster. Switch the block to the other side if you're using it. Press down into the fingertips, lift up through the heart and then sweep your right arm up and over. And again, it's just a micro side bend. You're just bending until you feel a deepening in the stretch. I can tell that my right hip flexor is a lot more sore than my left hip flexor. You might notice something like that too, some asymmetry in the body. It's totally normal. Good, come up. Drop your prop to the side if you're using it, and then shift back to down dog. Pedal out both legs, just bringing in some balance. Good, on your next breath in, look forward to your hands, come forward to a plank, and then slowly lower all the way to your belly. And then we just do my favorite yoga transition, the pancake, flip over. So now that you're down on your back, let's continue to open up the hips. We'll find a little happy baby. Draw your knees in, and in happy baby, three options. You can either take your hands to your thighs, which is really nice, especially if you feel pretty sore today. You can also take your hands to your ankles, or you can cup around the outside edges of the feet. And as you come into happy baby, find two actions. Use your arms to pull the knees down, then gently resist the pull by pressing your feet up. 
You'll naturally notice that your tailbone drops a little bit here. It may or may not touch the floor. It's not really important if it does. Instead, find the sensation of the stretch and ensure that you can breathe through it. You want the stretch to be something that makes a difference in the body, but it also is manageable for your breath. Good. One more inhale. On your exhale, draw the knees into your chest. Implant your feet down, hips width distance. Sweep the backs of your heels with your fingertips and scooch your shoulder blades underneath you. Lift up into just one bridge pose today. Root, root down through your feet. Hips go towards the ceiling. Now I like to direct my tail to the back of my knees by gently drawing the pubic bone up towards the belly button and then lift the heart a little higher up towards the chin and then gaze straight up or even just a little bit behind yourself so that your neck stays long. You don't want to crunch down on your neck. This is a really nice posture to open up the front line of the body and it's also working the back line of the body. So even though this is a rest and recovery day, you're still getting some activity in. One more breath. Good. On your exhale, release your seat all the way down to the mat. Take your left leg long and hug your right knee around your rib cage up to your armpit. So we explored a little bit earlier our thread the needle twist, and I talked about twisting and digestion. This posture, coupled with the supine twist that we're about to do, is really, really great for all of your digestive organs, and it actually stimulates all your digestion. So that's good news, definitely something that we have to think about when we're considering any weight loss, fitness, or nutrition regimen. One more breath, and then twist. So for this supine twist, stack your hips, drop your right knee over to the left, but it does not have to touch the floor. Take the right arm out, and then if it feels comfortable, gaze at your right thumb. You don't have to add any pressure to the twist. Just let the body go where it naturally wants to go. Our spine does not like being tugged on, neither do our hips or our pelvis. So if you notice a natural stop or pause in the body, respect it, honor it. We call that our edge, right? You don't wanna go over the edge. Good, come back through the center. We'll take the half wind removing pose on the left side. So the right leg goes long, left knee a little bit to the outside of the rib cage and then up to the armpit. So on the right side, you're massaging the ascending colon, and on the left side, you're massaging the descending colon. Good, one more big breath in. On your exhale, twist. So stack the hips, take the knee across the body. It does not have to touch the floor. Just let your toe touch down. You could even put a pillow or your yoga block under your knee for support. Outstretch the left arm and gaze to your hand. One more breath in. All the way out. Back to center. And then squeeze everything tight. Knees to your chest. Forehead to your knees, take a deep breath in, fill up with gratitude for your rest and recovery flow, and then Shavasana. Extend your legs out, let the arms come softly down to your side and close your eyes. Even here, stay involved with those deep breaths, those diaphragmatic, stress-relieving breaths. And allow the open mouth exhales to take away what no longer serves you. You can feel yourself 
getting stronger, getting calmer. Feeling more satisfied in your own skin. You don't have to wait till tomorrow to feel confident. You don't have to wait till the end of the 30 days to feel calm or to like yourself. You can do all of those things right now. Good. Take one more breath in. Open mouth, exhale. Reach your arms overhead. Take a big stretch. Point through your toes. And then draw the knees over to the side. Roll to fetal pose. Use the hand that's touching the ground to gently press up to a seat. And we'll meet with our hands at heart center. So Anjali Mudra, this hands at heart center is a gesture of offering and receiving wisdom and grace. And I like to think of it as just a gesture of gratitude. Thank yourself for showing up to your mat today. Thank yourself and be grateful for your willingness to stick with a habit. And I can't wait to see you in the very next video. Until then, namaste. Way to go. You made it through your first week and the first week is always the hardest. So give yourself a big hand for sticking with it. And while you're at it, I want you to sit back and acknowledge all of the hard work that you've done this week. The new poses that you've tried, the fact that you set some awesome goals for yourself. In fact, on the topic of goals, sometimes it's really easy to get focused on the end result, right? We really want those goals to be achievable and to feel great about them at the end. But when we fixate only on how far we have to go, sometimes we don't recognize how far we've come. So today's bonus tip is all about celebrating your success so far and setting yourself up with some reward pathways so that you feel good every single time you commit and recommit to your practice. So the reward pathways, it's not just feel goods. Well, actually it is feel goods, but it's feel goods from a science perspective because our brain already associates our self-care with this happy hormone release. So we get a flood of endorphins and these good feeling chemicals in our brain when we pause and take time to do something that's really good for us. You're getting that with your exercise already. So why not reinforce those reward pathways with little things that you can do after your exercise that feel really good to you? So maybe during the week, it's small things like taking a great hot shower or a bath after your exercise. And on the weekend, it might be something like saving your favorite TV show until after you've done your workout. One tip I do have for you, though, is to notice if you're only rewarding yourself with food. That's really common, that we, we save our treats for after our exercise, when really those treats aren't bad. We actually need to look at how we moderate those treats throughout our diet anyways. So instead of rewarding yourself with food, I encourage you to amplify the brain's natural reward process with something you can do that's associated with self-care, an action you can do. Again, like a hot bath or your favorite TV show or saving a chapter in a juicy book until after you've done the work of exercise or meditation or whatever that day's video has ready for you. When we think about rewards, sometimes we think they're not that important. But what we know about the brain, especially the brain's ability to help us change things in our life, is that we need to set up these reward pathways so that we can feel successful the entire way through. So I want you to take a moment, take out your journal or a piece of paper, and write down maybe three big rewards you can set up for yourself over the course of this challenge. Maybe week two, you go get a manicure for yourself. Week three, perhaps it's a date with a friend that you haven't seen in a while. Maybe week four, you go and you get yourself some new fitness clothes. Set yourself up with some special treats for yourself, not food-related treats, actionable uh, treats so that you feel really empowered 
and you feel good about all of the hard work that you've already accomplished. I think this is a homework that you're going to absolutely love to take on. So now that you have three rewards that you can set up for yourself, I also want you to write down three things that you're really proud of. Maybe it's tackling a pose you've never tried before. Perhaps meditation was brand new to you and you feel really excited that you actually took it on, sat there, and were just totally present with your breath. Maybe the fact that you've actually made through an entire week of watching these videos every single day is a huge accomplishment. Write it down. Be sure to acknowledge things in yourself that you are proud of. I think this is one homework assignment that you're going to feel really, really good about, and I hope you do. I'm so excited to be on this challenge with you step for step, and I can't wait to see you in the next video. You're doing great. You can stream more full programs and classes right now on Amazon. Click the link below to find Julia Marie Yoga on Prime Video or on the Amazon Wellness Plus channel. Introducing Yoga Plus, offering a free series every month with over 300 different videos. Take control of your health. Work out anytime, anywhere. Yoga Plus, download now for free.